Hello everyone, I am Manu Vijayan. In this video, we are going to discuss another important topic, Regional Imbalance. Regional imbalance refers to differences in economic development and uneven economic achievement in different geographical regions. Now you can see the presence of regional imbalance. Regional imbalance is reflected by the indicators like per capita income the proportion of population living below the poverty line, the percentage of urban population, and the percentage of population engaged in agriculture and industrial sectors, infrastructural development of different states, etc. So, we can identify the regional imbalance with the help of these indicators. Next, need for balanced regional development. Within democratic polity, growth and prosperity must exhibit regional balance. Thus, a democratic government striving to achieve such a balance is axiomatic. We know that India is subdivided into 29 states, differing in terms of their productive potential and the type of industry they can support and the realization of their potential holds the key to increasing the competitiveness of the nation as a whole. And regional disparity in development causes challenges like uh, violent conflicts, unplanned and haphazard migration. For example, insurgency in Northeast and left-wing extremism in large parts of central and eastern states of India. And the sustainability of the growth rate and the goal of the country to achieve its development target will be difficult to meet unless India develops as an integrated whole of regional competency. Next, we are going to discuss causes of regional disparity. Historical factors, geographical factors, location specific advantages, early mover advantage, failure of planning mechanism, restricted success of green revolution, law and order problem, intra-regional disparity. First, we are going to discuss historical factor. The British government and industrialists developed only those regions of the country which possessed rich potential for prosperous manufacturing and trading activities. Thus, port cities like Bombay and strategically important areas like Calcutta and Madras received initial development. And in the absence of proper land reforms measures and proper industrial policy, the country could not attain economic growth to a satisfactory level. And geographical factors. The difficult terrain surrounded by flood-prone areas, hilly terrain, rivers and dense forest leads to increase in the cost of administration cost of developmental projects, besides making mobilization of resources particularly difficult. So the Himalayan states like Himachal Pradesh, Northern Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Northeastern states remain mostly backward due to its inaccessibility and other inherent difficulties. Next, location specific advantages. Due to some locational advantages like availability of irrigation, raw materials, market, port facilities, etc., some regions are getting special favor. 
in respect of site selections of various developmental projects for example oil refineries are mostly located in close to sea and next early mover advantage we know that new investment in the private sector has a general tendency to concentrate much on those regions having basic infrastructural facilities and the term lending institutions and uh, commercial banks tend to concentrate investments in the relatively more developed states next uh, failure of planning mechanism here lack of adequate resources poor implementation of plans and a lack of planning capacity at the state level reduced capacity of planning commission to ensure balanced development and the restricted success of green revolution we know that green revolution improved the agriculture sector to a considerable extent through the adoption of new agricultural strategy of high yielding variety seeds assured irrigation provision of technical know how etc but the benefit of green revolution were restricted to punjab haryana and western uttar pradesh because these states were traditionally wheat growing states with adequate policy support from state governments and had advantage of irrigation facilities but other areas lacked and could not reap benefits of green revolution next law and order problem extremist violence law and order problem etc have been obstructing the flow of investments into backward regions besides making flight of capital from backward states and intra regional disparity an important aspect of regional disparities in india is the significant level of disparities which exist within different states for example vidarbha in maharashtra and saurashtra in gujarat demand for and creation of some of the states in the past in the wake of popular agitation was based on perceived neglect of certain backward regions in some of the bigger states such as creation of andhra pradesh and gujarat in the 50s and creation of punjab haryana and himachal pradesh in the 60s in each state specific reasons exist for backwardness of regions within states for example the major cause of backwardness of vidarbha and maradwada in maharashtra and northern karnataka is the scarcity of water and the backwardness of certain regions in gujarat madhya pradesh bihar and orissa can be associated with the distinct style of living of the inhabitants who are mostly tribals and neglect of such regions by the ruling elite thank you have a nice day